The quest for the boys' 2014 AA Hockey Championship begins today. Lakeville North Panthers come into this tournament as one of the favorites to win the state championship. It would be their first. They are looking to establish a championship tradition. They will be facing off against the Roseau Rams, who already have a championship tradition in the hunt for an eighth state title in their 34th trip to the state tournament. This game has it all, North versus South, Big school versus small school. It really does not get any better than this. The Rosa Rams against the Lakeville North Panthers. And joining me, as always, to analyze the action, Mike McGraw and Dave Palmquist. And Mike, let's start with you and the Rosa Rams. They have not been here since 2010. They do not have a lot of guys in the roster with any state tournament experience. No guys, as a matter of fact. They don't have one player that has tournament experience, but they are an experienced team. For Rosa, I think two things are critical. One, their role players have to be very good today. And secondly, their power play that's clicking at an astronomical 51% is going to have to make Lakeville North pay today, Thomas. And Dave, last year Lakeville North came into this tournament with a losing record and obviously did not win the championship this year. They come in as one of the favorites. They do, and that's going to be an interesting point to see how tight Coach Eichner has his team ready. They're a number two seed in this tournament. They're feeling very confident with that. But with that comes a little bit of more pressure this year. And it's going to be interesting to see what kind of start they can get off to. They're going to want to get to a fast start and take the life out of uh, Rosa early in this game. And as we look at the bracket for the AA tournament, you'll see why there's going to be some pressure. There are some quality teams here, Mike. There are some quality teams. In the first game, you know, it's... Roseau, can they work their magic of old? And Lakeville North, can they really show how good they are, Tom? And then, of course, in that bracket tonight, you've got Edina, the defending state champion. And with Hill Murray knocked out of the tournament, it really, a lot of people think it comes down between Lakeville North and Edina. They really do. And what makes this state tournament so great is that you've got the Edinas and the Lakeville North kind of clear-cut favorites. But you got the Cinderella teams, like the Stillwaters, like the Rosos, which is going to make this for a great tournament. We didn't have any upsets in Class A, but you never know what's going to happen in Double A. Our action will continue in just a moment. Tom, thanks very much. Uh, we put in that category with you, <laughs> Lou. I'm very happy to do that. And uh, congratulations to Lou Nanny. This is the 50th season tournament that you've covered. Well, Gary, it's gone fast, but I'm glad to be able to be here still <laughs> after 50 years. And we'll still get to see some great kids as we do each and every year in this tournament. Let's take a look at the two teams we see in Game 1. Well, in Game 1, we're going to see Zach Yon. He's got 39 goals for Rozo this year. You can expect this guy to get a lot of attention from Lakefield North Panthers. And for the Lakefield North Panthers, they got three palings. Our leading goal scorer of the three palings, Jack Paling there at number three. He's going to be a, really a threat every time he's on the ice. Lou, all those failings will be on the same line, so we'll see whether or not they can be shut down or whether or not they can put that puck in the net. Because Rosso's going to pick up a victory here. That line's going to have to be strong. We are just minutes away from dropping the puck in our first quarterfinal game of the boys Class AA 2014 State Hockey Tournament. The excitement is building, so is the tension. You can see the look on the players' faces as they get ready to take the ice. The Lakeville North Panthers, this is uh, fascinating, the transformation Dave Palmquist they have made in the past year. Look at their record last year when they did make the state tournament with a losing record. Now they're one of the favorites. Well, Coach Iger certainly is taking this program to a new level. This is in his third year at Lakeville North, 11-16-1 last year, now to a number two seed in the state tournament. They really feel confident about that. The fact that these teams voted them as the number two seed, they're feeling really good about themselves. And a lot of these guys were here last year. They know how to deal with the television cameras, the big crowd. That's going to help them. It certainly is, and that's what he talked about earlier this week, the experience that they can bring to this state tournament, and that's what he's going to be looking to as they approach this first game. And Mike, uh, the Roseau Rams also taking the ice right now. To get here, they had to beat a tough Moorhead squad in the section finals. And they beat Moorhead for the third time this season in the section finals. And here you see Alex Strand and uh, Zach Yon working their magic. Those are two of the kids that you should keep an eye on today, Tommy. They have to have big games for Rozo today in order for them to beat Lakeville North. And then you take a look at the appearances of the teams in the state tournament. You can see Rozo uh, with 34, Edina at 25, and then a lot of the other teams, Duluth East, uh, also a regular. One other thing about Rozo's 34 trips here in hockey, they have more trips as a golf team to the state golf tournament <laughs> than they do to this. And the reason that was brought up is Zach Yon is a great golfer. 
puts the hockey stick down in the spring and hits the golf ball about 300 off the tee. And judging by the snow banks I saw outside, he can play golf in about three months, right, Dave? <laughs> I was, I was going to say, I don't think he's going to have a golf season this year with the snow outside, but this is going to be a great first-round matchup. you got kind of the favorite now in Lakefield North and this Rozo team from the north. It's going to be an exciting game. All right, Rozo loves to play the underdog when they have to, coming down from up north. Let's go down ringside now to Dave Wright. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Excel Energy Center and the 70th Annual State Boys High School Hockey Tournament. This morning's game is a Class 2A quarterfinal between the champions of Section A with a record of 27 and 1, the Rosa Rams, and the champions of Section 1 with a record of 23, 4 and 1, the Lakeville North Panthers. Now let's meet the entire roster's remote teams. First, let's meet Rozo. Senior goaltender number one, Ryan Anderson. Junior forward number two, Connor Miller. Senior forward number three, Alex Polstengar. Sean Goose, Brian Erickson, Andy Headlam, head coach Andy Lundbaum, the Rosa Rams. Now let's meet Lakeville North. Senior goaltender number one, Will DuPont. Yo 
The assistant coaches are Jake Taylor, Brett Okerson, Jake Edivac, Bob Altavila. The head coach is Trent Eigner, Lakeville North Panthers. Here are the officials assigned for today's game. Your linesmen are Anton Ferenbach of St. Paul, Dustin Reimarchek of Hanover. The game referees Michael Elam of Woodbury, Jerry McLaughlin of Andover. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you all please stand, remove your hats, and face the flag, and join the Lakeville North Band under the direction of Nathan Earp as they lead us in our national anthem. It's always exciting when this building starts to fill up for the Class AA quarterfinals. Tori, are these two teams ready for the big spotlight? Well, absolutely. Lakeville North should be as well as they come in as a huge favorite. They are trying to win their first ever state tournament game in the quarterfinals. They're just 3-13 and 13 in seven appearances. They're also representing Section 1A, who hasn't had a state champion since 1977. They haven't even had a representative since 1989 when Rochester John Marshall got there, and I talked to head coach Trent Eigner about it. He says that they ought to prove that there is good hockey south of the river, and they'll have a formidable opponent here in Rozo, who Gary and Lou is basically north of everything. Guys, enjoy it. They just hope they're not north of this game, right? That's All right. right. <laughs> Let's take a look at our styling goalies brought to you by Catholic United Financial Life Insurance Annuities and Retirement Products. Well, you're looking at Ryan Anderson, who's had a real good season for the Rozo Rams. He's got a 27-1 record, 225 goals against average, and .90 oh, stop, uh, save percentage. And in the nets, a youngster, a freshman, Jake Ottinger. This kid is really something. It's going to be something that maybe is the backbone for this team for a long time if they don't lose him because he's six foot three and can stop pucks. Look at that goals against average of 1.5. Ottinger's already picked up the uh, five shutouts, which is a school record. He's got a chance uh, to break that record if he picks one up here in the tournament. And he will be obviously a key in this game. 
You're looking at the coach there, Gary, <laughs> treading Eidinger. I was talking to him before the game. He really feels good about his team. He's got a great balanced team. He says, we're ready this year to play. He says, we've had a great season, and I think our team's going to do real well in this tournament. Well, they went 24 goals for and only two against in the sectional, so we'll see whether or not they continue uh, that kind of play. Rozo in the dark jerseys in the green. We'll start it up with Alex Strand. Strand will drop three on three to open it up in the middle. Shot and a save made. Rebound comes back to the slot. That one's going to be kicked away off a stick. Early chances off the, the draw on the first time up ice. And it looks like they're going to come out pounding the pocket. Shot in by Nate Rotten. That'll go back in behind the net. Cleared up to the near side boards and out. Halston's guard. Trying to bring it in. We'll get bumped off the puck. Good check put on. Shot goes wide. Both these teams in their first opportunity with the puck are looking at the net. They really feel uh, confident with the puck. They're handling it well, moving it well. Shot's going to go wide. Altavila on that one. Puck on the far side, Bards. Paling got it. We'll see Nick Paling wearing number 7. 29 assists. He leads the team in that department on the line with his brothers. And they'll get a lot of ice time in this game. The question is whether they're going to be able to stand up to a little more physical team, probably in Lakeville North. And that's what Lakeville North is going to try and do today, Gary. Be physical with them. Olsen's guard will dump that one in as they will get the line change coming around to the far side boards. They was trying to knock it out of the zone, could not. Magnuson able to hold it in. He lost it, trying to get a shot off. Good forechecking job down low. As Bjergsen was there putting the pressure on, keep an eye on him today. He gets it done. That will be whistle. Let's take a look at our game plan. Brought to you by Education Minnesota. 70,000 educators working together to improve education and help students succeed. Well, the Rosa coach says he wants to weather the first five minutes and be quick on the four check. Lakeville wants to con control their emotions and be physical, as we said, and be physical with three players on that Rosa team. That's the key. You're going to see him trying to hit Jan Strand and Bjergsen. Uh, a lot here today. Nixon can really play. Gets a lot of ice time. And they're going to bring the faceoff back out to uh, center ice. A discussion about that. As Rozo got the first shot of this game. And the only one up on the board here in the opening couple of minutes. Isaac Magnuson back to get it. Lake Villain the white will dump it into the near side. Up along the wall. It'll be turned. Trying to get it out in front was Hazlitt. Couldn't find anybody near side wall. A lot of pressure being put on both forwards and D both ends early in this game trying to keep the heat on the puck. Yeah, that's what you're going to expect from Lakeville. They forecheck aggressively and that time Hazlitt was able to get a turnover, get a good shot on net. The coach, you're looking at the fellow with the beard there, that's Jake Annabeck. He played at the University of Minnesota and that's his son, 21, that was out on that line. On the offensive draw, trying to push it back into the middle. Lakeville couldn't get it in. Matt Arnold had won the faceoff. Cleared around the far side boards. Hyden able to hold it in. Hyden will pick that one up off the wall. Trying to dump the center. Not a lot of room. Milky there. Number seven. Rozo had it. It'll come back through the crease and all the way back into the other end. This could be a tight game. Both of these teams have the ability to score. Lakeville North, seeded number two for the tournament, comes in averaging five goals a game. Of the eight teams in the tournament here in Double A, they have the biggest number offensively in goals per game. Yeah, they've got great balance on their forward lines, Gary. All three lines can score. Balls grad came over, put the good hit on it, cleared the zone. Will do so now. Played back in uh, behind the net, wrapped around, trying to get it out. Suffer didn't have any room over there. Knocked down by Strand. Alex Strand, nine, had it, couldn't control it. Zach Yon, he's their leader out there. Keep an eye on him. Tipped, didn't go anywhere. Hit a skate, knocked away to the side. Alex Strand with a great chance. Number nine, who was playing out in front. On the near side, Bukesong had it and lost it. And Lakeville will work it up the boards. Not out, bad outlet pass. Shot and a save made. Good chance. That was Yawn. Do not give him those chances. You're right, and he's had one from each side now. He plays the left wing, but he came over this time on the right side. You could see him getting that puck. He comes over right here. He's going to pick up that puck, and he knows to put that puck on the net. Goal scorers put shots on net. He's got 39. He puts a lot of shots on the net. Good stop made by Jake Ottinger, the freshman goaltender with that 1.5 goals against average. Impressive numbers this season for him. Lakeville will move it out. Netting will drop it off. Shot. That'll be the save made at the other end this time. And again, 
little opening as the open ice right now is coming at the uh, top of the dots and back as they drop deep on defense. That'll be kicked away. Came off the stick of O'Leary who deflected it back in behind the net. Can't be handled. Bailing's got it. This is Jack Bailing. Bailing will drop it to the far side middle. Shot deflected up in the air and over the net. Ryan Bailing was out in front down on one knee when he deflected that. There's Ryan Bailing number four coming over to get it into the corner. The Paling brothers out there on top if you're going to win. Boy, they handle the puck well, and they know where each other is. They move that puck very quickly and very smartly. Popped up as they tried to clear the zone. Monster and Logan Monster had trouble moving it up and out of the blue line. And uh, Rozo will make the line change here. Sent around hard as they were coming out on the ice and will get away with that line change and a nice play by Milky to move that out to center. Sent back in deep. Now Lakeville starts to put a little heat on with the forecheck. Intercepted at center. Lakeville's got to clear the zone and it'll roll back in behind the net. Nate Broughton coming back to get it. Broughton out there defensively with uh, Biuk Song. Looks on near side. Troubles. Two together in the dot. That's almost a guaranteed steal, and that's what happened. Has it back in behind the net, trying to center. Still has control of it. Looking, nobody in the middle. Lakeville playing it deep up along the blue line. It'll be held in again. Goes off the skate before it got to the net. Broughton's got it. Broughton sends it up. Can't get it by the point man. Intercepted again. This time Castle, and Castle will clear. Nice job by Lakeville on the pressure. Boy, they wouldn't allow Rosa to change their defense there. They really put a lot of pressure on. Very strong on the forecheck. Back in behind the net for the backhand shot that ended up going off a skate that time. That was Max Johnson with the opportunity. And now Lakeville wants a, a line change. They'll have time to get it in as it goes back in to the Rosso end and in behind the net. They complete the line change here. Coming out is uh, Jack McNeely. Keep an eye on him, number 20 for Lakeville. He can uh, move the puck and says a school record for defensemen in points scored this season. Face back in behind the net. Alex Strand skating well early on in this game. Came in and took that puck away. He had three steps in order to get there. Cleared back up to the point. Got to clear the zone. Rosso will as they dump it in on net. Save made on the dump in. Cleared off the far side boards. 11-23 left here first period. 3-2 the shots. Lakeville on top in that department, but nobody getting it in. Chance right through the middle on a nice pass by Palin. Palin put that one down the center. Couldn't get the tip. Strand dropped it off near side. Halston guard trying to get it back into the middle. Point shot save. Rebound empty net open. But the puck squirts back to the blue line and cleared out of the zone. Halston guard got it out. This line's been dangerous for Rosa. That's the only chances they're getting from Jan Strand and Halston guard. Both these goaltenders in the sectionals gave up very few rebounds. Obviously a key when you've got offensive talent against you. Well, and they're good goaltenders, too. They've uh, they've seen a lot of pucks in their day. Dukes on able to make uh, the drop in and a save made off it. Centering baskets blocked back in behind the net. You can already see the great work done by that defenseman. Coming off the bench, shot, save, and a rebound side of the net. Penalty coming up. As they did not pick him up on the line change, that gave him the opportunity. And we're going to get a tripping call. Pretty good firepower at each end as both these teams here in game one today setting a fast pace. Well, our first penalty of the game picked up right here, Luke. And you can see a tripping call coming here against O'Leary. You can't do that. <laughs> this is going to give Lakeville North the first power play of the game. They've had a solid power play this year. Not great. 21% in high school is not great when you compare it to Rosos at 51%, but they are dangerous. Rosso on the uh, kill has given up only 13 uh, on the season. 18% uh, percent and a pretty good penalty killing unit. So let's see if Lakeville can take advantage of the opportunity here. They got that face off in the end and able to control it. Matt Arnold will work it back out onto the point. Point shot taken. That's going to be deflected deep. Jack Neely is that point man as they go to the 1-2-2 power play. Neely leaves it off Arnold. That shot is deflected wide. Rebound off the backboards. Hyden had a great chance right there. Connor Hyden, who had 23 points on the season, was set up in front. That's going to get blocked to the corner. Back on on the penalty killing unit was able to block that, but they cannot clear. Back to the near side point for the shot. And that's going to be deflected. Max Johnson with the opportunity. Out of Vila over to get it. It'll dump deep. They set it up wide here. Nobody uh, in that slot area at the moment as the puck gets tied up behind the net. Nice work back there by Hoganson. 
and able to take off some of these seconds on the power play. One minute left to go in the advantage. Rozo drops back into the D shot. That's going to go wide of the net. Rebound back up along the near side board. Johnson clears it back up onto the point. He'll get it back on the near side. His shot. That's Bach. Got it again. And he goes off the crossbar. First good chance of the game coming on the power play. Max Johnson, who uh, had 31 points and 12 goals on the season, almost got another one. Well, he made a good move to get free there. And as you said, just off that crossbar, that could have been the opening goal. That'll be off the right side pad on a shorthanded effort. Palin got a down low fanned on the rebound, and he was open. Great work on the penalty killing unit right here by Jack Palin, who got two opportunities off, and now he's going to hustle back on D. Carried by Milky in behind the net. They'll get a new power play unit out there with the clock at eight seconds left on a shot. Just missed it. It went up and over on the chance by Klotz. Rebound comes back to the top of the dot. That's going to be deflected off the skate wide. And it back. And the penalty is over. And uh, Rozo able to kill it off. Back got a couple of chances. A good kill by Rozo. And they have nine shorthanded goals this year. And they almost got another one uh, on that opportunity by Hulskin's uh, guard. Good job by Ryan Anderson uh, on that last rebound. The goaltender came right out on the side. Back to five on five hockey. Each team with five shots in the game. Centering pass. Got there. Looking. Holding shot. Is going to be deflected up and into the corner. Another great opportunity. As again, this top line. They can move it. Shot in the save. Made. Rebound. Is covered. Got the whistle early anywhere. And there is that paling line. Rozo getting the opportunity. Puck came free. Net was open, but the stick wasn't long enough for Halston guard. Delays in the game where there is a long break. He's going to use them a lot, and that's why you see this line on the ice so much, and you've got to expect if that happens, you know that Rozo's coming back with their top line. Coaching to the situation league. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> get an opportunity to get the studs out there, let them play, and that's what he's doing. Paling will try and drop it off back in behind the net. Jack Paling wears number three, their leading goal scorer and overall scorer, as he uh, had 28 on the season goal-wise. Paling out there along the near side boards. This is tough on D. This is where Rozo knows when this first line is out there for Lakeville. They've got to get the puck out of the zone. Even if they don't develop chances, if they can just keep that line off the board, then they've succeeded. In the middle, they do develop a chance. Got fanned on. That was Alec Halstengard who had the opportunity. Couldn't get the stick on it. And you're right. It's tough to do to keep that line off the board when you look at the scoring statistics they got. They are dangerous every time they get control of that puck. Yep. Zephyr lost his stick there as it went flying up in the air. Ooh, a shot at center ice coming through the middle. And in back, he was going to be deflected on the save made into the corner. Nice work, two goaltenders, Jake Ottinger for Lakeville, making a couple of key saves early on here in this game. Helgeson dumped it back in behind the net. Altavilla goes back to get it. Altavilla trying to move it up, cannot. Taken back by McNeely in behind the net. He took the soft check from Monstrand that time, but got it out of the zone. Both teams have completed line changes. They will muck it up at center. Got it into the zone right along the blue line, played up by Rozo. Rozo dumps in. Helgeson got it in. Manager back in behind the net. Didn't have anybody to go to and lost the puck. Got some help down deep by McNeely that time. Couldn't clear it out of the zone. Altavilla came back to get it. He too running into trouble. Two four checkers working back in behind the net for Rozo Lou. And that's what their strength is. They are a strong four checking team. They'll go after you. They've been that way since they've been in Bantams. They are a very, very competitive group. Miller's going to move the puck up. He'll take the shot from center. It'll go high off the glass. Miller trying to follow it in on his own rebound. They were changing behind him, so he didn't have any help. They are trying to move it up. Bad pass in. Shot save made. Rebound kicked in behind the net. Alex Strand, boys, he had some chances here. In this first period, that one got coughed up right in the slot. It'll roll in and be held on to Ottinger. Can't get a better chance than that. Goalie made a great save. That's one of those where you look back later on in life and go, how did I miss that? <laughs> and the hell gets it really <laughs> later on in. He did. And our fan cam is brought to you by 45 TV. Fans on hand for hockey is brunch on this double-A day with four games, of course, to be played here. 
And uh, their favorite schools involved. No score in this first one, 7 6. Rosso's got the advantage in shots early on. It's a pretty good goaltending at both ends. Ryan Anderson has gotten it done. And at the other end, maybe a little surprisingly, Nick Ottinger's had to make some big saves. Rosso's been able to put some heat on. Bailing back the other way, the shot got deflected in front. Return pass goes to the side. Kicked away by Halston's guard to the side of the net. And that will be chipped up. Boy, it is tough when this first line is out there for Lakeville to get that puck out of the zone as they can dangle. Bailey dropped it off for his brother. It was deflected, taken away by Strand. Strand's been out there against this line. Into the middle, a deflecting pass that just missed. Bailey had an opportunity to the break in and backhander, and it got blocked before he ever got the shot off. Wow. What an opportunity at the other end taken by Zach Yon, their leader. Like you said, what an opportunity. A great pass from Strand up to Yon. He makes a good move. He gives him a fake. But at the last second, he just lost the puck right in front of the goaltender. It looked like he would have had him on the backhand for an open net. Great play by Alex Strand to get that up to Yon. Yon, 82 career games, 99 goals, and 195 points in those games. You don't want to give him those kind of chances too often. Yeah. You just hope you got away with one right yeah. there, and you hope this doesn't happen again. Loose at center. Lakeville uh, did stay out of the zone. Dumped back in around the net. Halston guard coming back to get it. Lost it into the middle. And a stick pickup right there by Milky may have presented, prevented that goal. Milky reached in for Rozo and picked that stick up on the setup, or they might have had one. Well, Rozo's collapsing real good in their own zone. They're not giving too many open areas in the slot area. They collapse down. It's tough to get pucks through the, uh, the middle of the ice there. Like Bill North moving it back up. Lost it. Both teams trying to get line changes done, so they'll send it back in. Ottinger for Layville playing it back in behind the net. The netminder came free to center. Opportunity. Hyden up. Hyden trying to get around the D. Backhanded it in front. Couldn't hit anybody. Good and coverage. Great coverage. It was a good back check there, that's for sure. There's no doubt about that. Holston guard really did a job there coming back. Puck gets knocked away. Good work by Matt Arnold, who had freed the puck up, taking it away from Broughton. Centering pass. That's going to go off a skate. Lakeville trying to work that puck in front more now and get chances. Hyden's pass will be deflected and out of play. Boy, and, and this is something, because if you look at it, Strand, Yon, and Halston guard are out there every second shift. And Halston guard, you notice right there, coming back and took that pass away. And number three there, Halston guard made a great play. And he had just come right back in the ice. He was double shifted there. You got to be in shape to play as much as they're playing right now. And no tripping call as he went down over the stick that time that got lost by uh, Milner. But Milner, no penalty called on him. Puck intercepted back into the middle, looking to center, trying to find somebody. He got blocked down low. Wilstan was there to knock it away. Great work behind the net. Hyden, Hyden having a couple of real good shifts. Centered it. Oh. Penalty will be coming in the hold. <laughs> Roseau didn't have much choice on that one. You're exactly right. I think it was Monsrud down there that was doing the holding because that was a dangerous opportunity Lakeville would have gotten, but it was held right in front. No doubt about that call. And Lakeville North going to get another power play opportunity. Although we have to say the last power play opportunity, they had a great puck control, moved it around a lot, had two shots, but overall the best chance was by Rozo that Billy Yon had. On the short-handed effort. So it'll be 14-11 uh, on the hooking call. And a power play opportunity again for Lakeville. Good short-handed work done last time on this uh, unit. See what they can get done here. Bailing will drop it off. Down on the dot. Save made again. Good chance right there. That was Nick Paling. Nick Paling had 12 goals on the season. Down the middle. Shot gloved and held on to. That collapsing D is opening up some ice. And did that goaltender Anderson look good on that? He just snatched that right out of the air. Just like picking cherries. A great shot that time. An excellent shot by Paling. But Anderson just beat him with a great, excellent golf glove save. Uh, a couple of real good chances on the power play opportunity, but not to be. Back up to the near side blue line shot. That got blocked in the middle. Jack Sadik had the opportunity. The attempt to clear by Strand. That was stolen. Good play again by Paling. If Paling to get that stick around, you better protect the puck. Back into the middle. Lakeville 
We get back on side. Power play with the minute 17 left to go. Paling's chance right straight down the middle and held on to Jack Paling with the opportunity. Gary, you're right. When Paling's are on, you have to protect the puck because they are very quick with their sticks. They got excellent hands, very ha fast hands, and they grab that puck quickly. And there's Paling taking the shot from the slot area. Anderson looks at that. Not a problem. The defense stayed in perfect position. Let the goalie see the puck. He had an easy save there. I don't think St. Cloud's too happy about having yeah. all three of those coming in. How does You're that right. happen? Yeah, and they're young. They got a weld before they come. And attempt to put it into the five hole gets blocked. It rolled through to the other side. Haslett had the opportunity, held it, waited, waited. And the puck ended up at the five hole save and then couldn't control it and it rode wide. When you look at uh, Anderson in the nets and he's got a .90 save percentage. And the way he plays, you wonder why it's not even higher. This kid has made tremendous saves. He's been tested this morning, and he has come up with the kind of saves you need, and he doesn't give you a lot of rebounds thus far. 55 uh, seconds left on the power play chance. Max Johnson, six on the side. Shot another deflection in front with a lot of bodies there, and that'll be cleared the length of the ice. Jack Vanilli, who took that shot, the defenseman, four goals, 26 assists on the season for the junior. Got some good size to him, but he's working up on the point on the power play. Back in behind the net. Honager going back to get it. Penalty killing unit will change up with 30 seconds left to go in the second power play for Lakeville here in a scoreless first period. Off the glass and up and deflected into the bench. And that's what Rosa wants to do. They want to make certain that they can put a little pressure on Lakeville, not allow them to get in the zone too easily. That time it took a long cross ice pass. And it was deflected, so they didn't get in the zone. They got the puck out. But Rozo thus far doing a pretty good job on the penalty killing, even though there's been great puck control by Lakeville North in the zone. But they haven't had the quality chances that you want to see him get. It's a 0-0 game, but that does not mean there have not been a lot of scoring chances, Mike. Rozo got a, had a number of them. One thing here, number three, Alex he uh, Halstengard was one of the kids that's played really well and is having a big game for Rozo. And here you'll see why Zach Yon is as good as everybody says he is. He had the goalie beat there, it just trickled off the heel of his stick. Great play. And then it, Lakeville's had some chances too, Dave. Yeah, it's really been a story of missed opportunities here in the first period, and Lakeville North certainly had great chances here a couple times on the power play. They really set up nice, but really weren't able to penetrate this Rozo defense, which did a great job that first period. All right, and as you look at the stats, they are brought to you by Polymet, and you can see a pretty even game. Shots on goal, face-offs, uh, a couple of power plays for Lakeville. Rozo has done a nice job of killing those off. Yeah, they have, and they've, uh, they've been trying to play a little physical, and you can see that show up in the hits 5-1 to one here in the first. Otherwise, it's been very even. Yeah, and you look at those two power play chances for Lakeville North that first period. You really want to take advantage of those special teams opportunities. Lakeville North, hopefully they're not going to look back and regret those first two in that first period. Our score is all knotted up at zeros, but Tori, that does not mean this has not been a very exciting game. But a very exciting game, and I think more exciting than Trent Eigner would like it to be for Lakeville North. I talked to him in the break there. He said we made a bunch of uncharacteristically bad mistakes, turnovers in front of their own net, and, and they did not play their normal hockey. They had a couple of bad changes as well. They took 25 shots, but only registered 11 on goal. He says we need to start to hit the net, but he expects more down low play, Louie Nanny, in the uh, in the second period here. They want to start playing below the dots. That's where they're at their strength. Well, that's right, uh, Tori, but the, fortunately for Rozo, they keep collapsing in front of the net, and they're not letting any of those pucks go through. The one thing Lakeville North has got to do, they got to be more physical. The coach said be, to me before the game, he says, we got to slow them down, especially Jan and Strand and Bukes, and, and he uh, really can't be too happy with his team having only one hit, Gary. Yeah, that's, uh, Rosso's played a very tough first. We were talking about the fact Lakeville last year, of course, had a very disappointing tournament appearance knocked out the first one and in games like this last year gets closer to you again yeah they, you have periods played like that where you're not able to get that first second goal and get a lead you're right the coach though is going to be telling them that they're an experienced team they're a good team and they have played some great teams this year 
So I think they might have more confidence in their ability because they are a deep team. They just got to get a little sharper coming out of their own zone and make certain that when they get the opportunity to shoot the puck, put it on the net. They're, they're overpassing just a little bit in the offensive zone. And in the offensive zone, Paling trying to bring it back out in front could not. That was Nick Paling who tried to move it back to the front of the net. In the white uniforms, this is Rosso's chance on the breakaway and another save made. Rebound goes wide. Alex Strand. What who, speed. He has skated the heck out of it here in the early parts of this game. It'll be dumped in on net wide. Paling got it in there. Rebounded off the far side boards. Rosso with it. Just underway here in the second period. 11-9 the shots. Red in favor of Lakeville North in that first period and there were chances early in that period and maybe again here as you get those fresh legs on each of these teams first line. Well you wonder how long those first lines are going to stay fresh though they've had so much ice it was almost like they were out every second shift for the most part that first period. Fourth lines uh, not getting uh, used here in this game and again with the TV timeouts that were talked about you get your first line out there double shifting many times if you have the opportunity. Brought in Inebeck and the drop pass is going to be deflected wide. Harry Inebeck had the opportunity as he came down the middle. Played by Heslett on the side. Off the wall. Inebeck went back to get it. Centering pass and you see Lakeville Noah trying to move that puck into the middle. There's just not any room there. Yeah, great defensive job by Rosa in their own zone. They're keeping their positions and they're keeping sticks in the passing lane. They're not letting things go through easily. That goes right through the crease on a centering pass right there that ended up going wide. Max Johnson gunned that one back into the middle. Sadik shot dropped in front, clipped away. Still loose at the dot. Shot again. Save made off the blocker. Goes straight up in the air to the side of the net. Ennebeck had it there and lost it. And Rozo is able to work it out. And they'll send it the length of the ice and the icing call. Well, you're going to look at the chance earlier for Rozo. Watch Strand with his speed right up the middle. Shoots the gap. Gets an opportunity right in front. And just couldn't quite get enough control of that puck to put it where he wanted to. He was able to get a soft backhand on that. But that speed of his and the splitting of the defense, the defense has got to make certain they don't have any gap in between them. they got to worry about the gaps in the middle besides the gaps up to the forward. Got to play a little tighter in that area. Good defensive work. Monstrand on the far side. Rozo clears the zone. Lakeville's now going to have to get skaters out of there. It'll go right up on the side of the net. Knocked off that back of the net. Two good goaltenders so far in this game. Ryan Anderson. Exceptional network, Rozo, and some big saves that he had to make has kept this game at 0 0. Two four checkers up, cleared up to the line, but not out. Held in, Altavilla had it, sends it back into the middle and heads to the net. Turn around, Klotz trying to get a shot off, couldn't find it. McNeely with it, back for Klotz in the corner. He got tied up by Halston's guard. Dale Halston's guard was there, circling. Trying to find someone in front. Goes off the side of the net. A centering pass. Hyden was the intended. Up onto the point. McNeely. That'll be sent in wide. You see Hyden cutting back and forth in front of the crease there. Trying to get a tip. Couldn't get it. So we're in the second period. This is the double-A day with four games to be played. And right now in the first one, no score. Assortment Lou of uh, teams, the eight that have made it here, kind of all over the map as to the number of visits and titles. Yeah, and yet you see a few of them, like uh, Rosso and Duluth East, Edina, been here a tremendous amount of times, and you get a good uh, balance when you look around the state. You've you got hockey players coming from every corner right now. You never know who's going to make it each year. That's what makes it so exciting. And uh, as all hockey fans know, if you get a hot goaltender in the tournament, yeah. <laughs> you never know. Sometimes you can be the favorite and one can be stolen uh, just based on goaltending that you can get. And we're seeing two out here today. Yeah, they're, they're both trying to get one. Certainly Lakeville coming in uh, the favorite. That'll be blocked into the corner. Offensive chance uh, by Paling that time as he came straight down the middle. Back behind the net. Jack Paling's got it. Paling looking, turning, sweeps it wide. Nick Paling was trying to get set up on that far side. And you can see right there, Gary, how you had four Rosal Rams down in front of the net. And they're not allowing those passes to come across the middle for good scoring opportunities. Rosal's doing a great job in their own zone defensively thus far. Duchon could not clear it out. Intercepted on the dot. Looking. Plots trying to get an opportunity. Puck came free again. It'll come back to Paling. Paling along the line, unable to hold it in. So Lakeville's got a clear here. 
Lakeville during the year only a 1.9 team goals against. They didn't get many up. Rozo 2.29 goals against them on the season, but both obviously very good. Back into the middle, two on one, backhand shot. That's going to go wide. And some chances here for Lakeville in this second period. Max Johnson had that opportunity. Polk checked away from Strand through center. Attempted dump in pass, can't get there. Gains the red, the blue. Get down the middle, deep shot, and a big save made. What a chance for Zach Yawn, and you see why he's one of the Mr. Hockey finalists. And you can see why he's got 39 goals with that release. Not only was it a hard shot, it was a way quickly. That's something that Lakeville's got to do when they get in the offensive zone, shoot the puck. Rozo's got some real battlers up front. This team, I watch them as the Bannons. They are extremely competitive. They don't quit. They go after you all the time, and they're playing the same way here this afternoon. Great save by Jake Oninger, that freshman goaltender. And you saw what he thought of the shot. He looked behind him. That shot's going to be a great save at the other end is Ryan Anderson. Able to get a blocker on that. Held in at the line. Hyden had it. Lost it. Up comes Milky. Milky had it poke checked away. Back comes Johnson. Johnson. Poke checked from behind. His centering pass will roll back into the middle. Held in the zone. Sadik. And that'll be deflected. So some chances here as it opens up a little bit for both teams. Today's closed captioning is brought to you by Polymet, working on a plan to mine the copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. Learn more at GoPolymet.com. When you look at this game, puck possession time, Lakeville's had a lot more. It's almost like rope dope but I'll tell you, don't give Rozo any opportunity because they are explosive. They take off in a hurry, and they get some pucks right up the middle and are dangerous when they're coming up with those long stretch passes. Ian Klotz had that last opportunity. Now working from behind the net. Klotz trying to find someone down low. They were setting up Hyden in front. That's what Lakeville's doing more of here in this second period, trying to get it in. Altavella shot, and that'll be a save made. So some chances starting to pile up here, especially, uh, as Lou said, for Lakeville. Smart chance there for Lakeville. They took the shot from the outside. He had a forward down close. You're looking at the goaltenders right there that have had an outstanding morning for us, Ottinger and Anderson. And boy, the shots on goal are 16-10, but the shots don't tell the story. It's the quality of chances that do. Each team's had real good chances. Neither of these teams able to put a uh, score on the board. You're 11-23 to go here in the second period in a scoreless game. Kicked up and out of there. Yawn, number 18, trying to work his way through. Could not. They'll play very tough man on him and have somebody following him, shadowing him all over the ice when Yawn's out there. Lakeville again able to intercept on the attempt to clear. Again, they are looking, trying to find someone in the middle. Paling on the near side. Ryan Paling moved it up the boards, got pushed up that way. We'll get some help. Jack Paling coming in from behind. He and his brother trying to control the puck against Zach Yon. There's some talent. Yon wins that battle. Yon to the red. Blue and in. Can he turn the D? Takes the shot. Save made left. Pad save. Good opportunities in trying to go wide. Pretty good hit right there. Put on as Paling went down. Nick Paling took that hit. Rosal's using their bodies very well. They had a large uh, advantage in hits in the first period, and they're continuing here in the second. Now Davila trying to dump it in. Lakeville wants the line change. Rozo does too. It'll be poke checked away. Rozo, though, wanting the change, able to control it. Augustin was back there to get it. The uh, dump in. Didn't go far enough. Elton Villa trying to send it in. Couldn't. Knocked away again at center. And the line changes will be completed as Lakeville will move it back up. Into the middle, Max Johnson, who has skated well. Johnson had the check from behind. Knocked down on the boards. In and back. In and back. Trying to muscle it. And it'll be cleared just to take the heat off. And that will be an icing call. Pretty good shots, Lou, here in this second period. And a lot of physical play as well, Gary. When you look at it, Rozo's not passing up any chances to hit. And that's what they have to do to beat Lakefield here this afternoon. Had many five-goal scorers, and that was exceptional. We had some other great ones. Dave Spihar one year. I think he had a hat trick in every game for Duluth East. And right now... Each of these teams would just be hoping to get one, let alone five, because these goaltenders are playing very well, Gary. They're not giving up anything to the forwards or defensemen. Ryan Anderson, you had a look at him there with that 2-2-5 uh, goals against and a 9-0-1 save percentage on the year for Rozo. Scoreless, and he'll get to work again right off the draw and hangs on to that one. And again, 
with the timeout. You get to get that first, your first line back in as they're able to rest. Innebeck playing back at the top of the dot. They try and draw back to him. Max Johnson did. Shot, save, pad, rebound. Net was open. Shuffled back in and held on to again. Two draws in a row. Lakeville wins clearly and, and cleanly. And you have to make sure you tie the man up or get to him. You can't lose those draws so easily because those are good scoring chances. And that rebound was an excellent scoring chance. Hazlett going right to the net after Ennebeck's shot. Good work uh, defensively. Austin Hoganson that time was able to hold his man up in front of the net so he couldn't get the rebound shot off. Right back in. McNeely and Flugie for a backhander. That'll go through the top of the crease on Zach Yon's opportunity. And that one will hit off the boards and the whistle will keep the face off in the zone face offs have been eight seven so far in the game Lake Bill North with the advantage by one but a couple of big ones in the offensive end that's right they were the ones that were the most dangerous so far in this game and you're looking at Zach Yon this guy is really a scoring machine 39 goals in 28 ga games and you could see how he uses his speed look how quick he John got the shot off from the faceoff. That's what faceoff wins do. And then the Hulskin guard gets the rebound and beats the goaltender. A great rebound goal. This kid, Halston guard, has played very well as at the whole first line. A win by Strand on the faceoff. A shot by Vaughn and Arion and boy. Ooh, what a rebound for Halston guard. Halston guard got paling down on the ice and behind him, and that opened it up. And a one nothing lead as Rozo gets the first one, and he's played a solid game. I mean, he deserves that. He's been there throughout this game. He has. He's played good defensively as well. And isn't it ironic? We see good chances on by each team by faceoff losses in the offensive zone. Yep. So Austin Guard gets the first of this game. That'll pick it up here. That shot got blocked on the way in as Paling took the risker. Paling trying to steal that. Poke checked away. Jack Paling can't control. Now with Lakeville North down by one. Trying to put the heat on. Save. Loose puck. Paling tipped it. Comes all the way back up onto the point and through center. Good chance there. Good shot from the point there by Sadik. Down low, another chance as it rolled back in behind the net. The goal coming at 7.35. Halston guard picking up his 20th of the season. And the first here in the tournament, Yon will pick up the assists on the goal. So off the faceoff, Rosso able to get it done. Right back into the middle and a two-on-two. -two. All alone, shot, score! He answered it! Paling got knocked down at the other end when the goal was given up, but he finds a way to drive one home. Well, I gotta tell you, you don't see much prettier three-way passing plays than that. Boy, when, you, when they're brothers and they know where each other is, you could tell they played together for a while. And the way they moved the puck, it actually left Anderson with no chance. You're gonna see a three-way passing play after the steal right here. You get the puck going over to the left wing on this pass from one paling to the next one. He drops it in the slot area. All alone was Jack Paling, their leading goal scorer, getting his 29th. But what a pretty pass and play when you look at it. Nick to Ryan to Jack, and it's in the net. They have played so much together. We were talking about it between periods. They just seem to know where the other brothers are on the ice. Hey, I'm telling you, it's got to be a feeling. Well, uh, uh, they say a lot of things about twins that they know where each other is. Jan trying to jam it in on a wraparound rebound goes wide of the net. Hard shot. Holston guard with yet another opportunity. Off the far side wall that came free getting knocked down was Jan that time. Good checking by Holston guard as he held it up at the line. It'll be whistled and the faceoff will come at center. So the answering goal. You get a, a turnover, and that's all you need. You got Nick Paling there feeding it over to Ryan Paling. He knows his brother's coming late. He just drops it in the slot. The goalie had to move to the right to take the angle away from Ryan left for the old hole open left side, and Jack made no mistake. 29th goal of the year for Jack Paling with brothers Ryan and Nick picking up the assists at 8.28. Two even strength goals virtually back-to-back -back here in the second period. 
So the shots up to 21 14 now in favor of Lakeville North. Big goal for Lakeville North to be able to answer that as quickly as they did. Buck will end up on the bench. It was, Gary, but I like the way each of these teams responded after the goal. Lakeville came right back and got a goal after Rosos. Now Rosal came back and put on some pressure, some of their best pressure on Lakeville. That shows you something. Both of these teams are not going to sit back. They're not going to quit. They're extremely competitive, and we can expect this all afternoon. Look at the three brothers sitting there. That's the line, the number one line that has already seen an enormous amount of ice time here in this game. Held on to Ottinger, dumped it behind the net. Eggville North trying to move it out, intercepted. O'Leary, under O'Leary, couldn't control it. Hope check back, Hoganson. Into the middle. And there's the whistle on the icing call. And the faceoff will come back to the other end. The one thing Rose has got to do, the defensemen have to move the puck quicker and on the stick. They're, they're not moving the puck out of the zone. They're not making outlet passes as good as they can. When they do that, this Rosal team's dangerous with their speed up front. Even uh, Lakeville in the first period, they started moving it good, then they start turning over. The defense, both of these teams could get better and make sharp outlet passes. Right off the faceoff, shot wide by Innebeck. Innebeck uh, with Matt Johnson getting the draw to him again. That's been a setup when they've had that faceoff in the right dot here, and they've gotten it done. Dump back into the middle, circling. Neslet has it in the corner. Neslet looking, cycling Johnson down low. Dumped it along the wall as they turn it back into the middle, intercepted. And it'll be cleared up and out of the zone. They do clear, sent right back in. Behind the net, Anderson. Up the near side boards. Rozo. Milky sends it to the wide side. Ellison came over to get it. Good uh, work on the checking game here at center ice and preventing Rozo from getting anything going. You're right. Both of these teams, their defensemen are standing up. There's not much room. They're playing their gaps real well. It's tight between the defensemen and the forwards. They're not giving much space there, so the defensemen are able to stand up and stop those plays right in the neutral zone by both teams. That's why we, we're not seeing real smooth play in the neutral zone thus far because of the way the defensemen are standing up there cutting out those passes coming across. Opportunities have come on when you're able to get that puck by the D and free somebody up on the other side, but a lot of chances here in the game to do that. From the point, a deflected shot. McNeely had the opportunity. Ran back up by Yon. McNeely will take him down. McNeely can play a physical game, and he's been on Yon here and knocked him down on a good follow-up check. Yon will come right back the other way. McNeely with him. Shot close. Save again. Snap it shot. I'm really impressed the way Yon puts all the shots on the net. They don't miss the net. When you're coming off the wing, if you miss the net, that puck's coming out all the way around the far side. Look at this. Upper corner, label. Every shot that he seems to take is on the net. That's what goal scorers do. They put the puck on the net. They don't miss the net. No good defensive work with the glove that time. Held in. Another chance shot. That one's going to be hit with a blocker, and it will go wide. Alex Strand has played a solid game. Back in again. Strand shot will go wide the other way that time. Aldevilla came over to get it. Couldn't do so. Strand, the pass a little bit behind him. He tried to wind up for the one-timer. Dump back into the zone. Look out here. Three on two opportunity. Now three on three. Lakeville back. Shot, and that'll be blocked off the stick of Ryan Paling. So here in the second... Both these teams finding a way to get it in as they answered one another. And it is 1-1 with 5.50 left in the second period. Well, here in the second period, Rose and Lakeville North tied at one. We're going to show you a defensive pack right here. And notice when you're looking at Rose's defense, every time you look at the screen, you see at least four players in the screen. That's what they're doing. They're collapsing in front of the net. You're always seeing four guys around, so there's not room to pass through the middle of those scenes, and that's what they do very well. They are real good deep in their zone from the dots down. Hook checking is an art, and uh, they've done it pretty well. You're right. It is an art, and when you can do that, that's a big benefit. Let's stick in there and break up some plays right off the draw. It'll be off the side of the net. Jack Bailing it with another opportunity as he took advantage of his own face-off win that time. Gets tied up. Halston guard with him over there. Digging in. Number seven, Nick Paling trying to get it out of there. 14 is Wattensdahl. Wattensdahl will play it back. Wattensdahl, the junior. The goal six assists on the season. 
Rozo right back the other way. Alex Strand, who has led the charge a number of times up ice. Strand, yawn. Yawn uh, got circled on the puck as Paling able to hang on to it. Found Yawn right in front of him. That pass off sticks goes high up in the air right under the board at center. Yawn's got it again. Has to turn the Jets on. He got double teamed and got turned around by Nick Paling. Held on to on the far side, Halston guard. That one will come to the near side corner. And both teams will get line changes completed here. Back in behind the net. Yawn again, dropped it. Didn't have any help. Paling was there to get it. Paling will move it up. Paling took the hit by Yawn on the far side. Back in a two on three this time. Pulled back into the corner. Paling had it, dropped it. Paling circling. Nobody out in front of the net. Turning him there is Strand. Will go to the point. Did not come outside the zone. Into the middle. Both teams need a line change here. yon has been out for a long time. He'll take the shot. Save will be made. Boy, he, he loves to shoot the puck. And as I said, he puts it on the net. Again, line change is needed here. So both teams try, trying to find a little time. And they'll send it down. Broughton coming back to get it. Broughton's pass did not clear the zone. Back on the far side, centered shot block. Good setup right there. Ian Klotz had the opportunity. Klotz got open in the middle, two on two the other way. Melky will try and move it in. He had it poke checked away. Hit taken at center ice as puck jammed up against the wall. Lakeville will move it back into their own end. One four checker. Barroso right now with 3.40 left here in the second period. And this game all knotted up and it's been played well. Little back checking work right there. Took a little off that shot as the save will be made. And we're going to check downstairs with Torrey. Gary, just a moment ago, Jack McNeely, who Trent Agner calls one of the best defensemen in the state there, has moved over to play the far side. So he's matched up on Zach Yawn right now. And as soon as he went out there, the first shift, he smoked him coming through center. Just a little uh, here I am and I'll be seeing you again. That's right, and he's going to have to pay a lot of attention to that guy, Gary, because he will be back again. <laughs> well, you really start looking at matchups here in this tight game. Backhanded in front, never ended up on net, and it will be rolled back out to center all the way down to the other end. Rosal defense doing a great job in front of their own net, covering up. Helping that net minder played by Sadik. Still got it on the stick in his own end, trying to turn it up, block. Donner Milner, number two, made a nice steal. And Sarah moves it up the boards. Again, not out. Good forechecking job here. That's Connor Milner, the junior, is up there on the forecheck for Rose. Now he'll head to the bench and they'll change it up. 255 left. Fresh legs on the ice. Rose trying to control in the end. Again, Strand just coming off the bench, had the opportunity, but couldn't get a stick on it. Ava will come the other way. Shot blocked straight up in the air. Uh, Sadik stick. Goes back out onto the point. Didn't have anybody. Well, the defense by both these teams is really something to see. You have to know to win the championship, you've got to have good defense and good goaltending. And each of these teams right now have that. And you have to think that whoever comes out of this game is going to be a formidable foe going forward. And, Lou, I would, I would have to believe for most fans, right now, uh, Rosso's game is a little better than maybe many expected. I think you're right, Jerry, because when you look at their record and the teams they played, they had more losses and didn't have as tough a schedule. But they got better at the end of the year, and as I said, I watched them play all the way through Pee Wees and Bantams. They're really competitive, and they know how to play. They come in with a five-game win streak. Lakeville North has won uh, three consecutive games, but they had won 19 in a row before yeah. they lost the final <laughs> regular season game. That's a quite an impressive yeah, streak. That's a run. Again, not a lot of room here. Not getting to dangle that puck very often as you got to get rid of it. Lakeville trying to move it in on side, and they do, but they had to just feather that one down into the corner. Dixon came over to get it, lost it. Henning was out there to help again. Taken in uh, by Strand. Strand, a very strong game. Knocked yeah. away by Klotz. And that'll be sent the length. Very strong down low. Like you said, he's really done a good job down low. You're going to take a look here at Zach Yon. He's the leading goal scorer. Look at him. He has 39 goals this year. And every time you look at him, he's going to shoot the puck. He's getting him off turnovers. He puts the pucks on the net. And I have to tell you, we were talking about Ovechkin leading the league right now with 44 goals. And he's like 100 and some shots ahead of the next closest guy. Mm. He puts the puck on net. That's what Zahn does. Every shot he's taken, as Lou said, it's been there. He's going to North Dakota. And he's made the commitment there. 
cleared up off the boards. Milky got it out of there. Right now, they're just exchanging some ice positions here with not a lot of chances. This period has had two different looks to it. First half of it was offensive. The second part of it's been all deep. Exactly. It's been all defense. It's been very good checking. One of the country's great awards if you can take that home. You're looking at Mr. Hockey finalists and you see one of the nominees, Zach Yon from Rosal, and watching him today, you could tell that he certainly deserves it. You're going to see a couple more in the next game with Eden Prairie. They got two of them in Snuggerud and Spinner. There he is on the bench, and his presence has been felt here in this game. Face-off win uh, taken by Hazlitt, the junior. Hazlitt's had a great... Uh, Regional as he came away with the three goals and six assists in the three games in the sectionals. He's good with the puck. He's controlling the puck a lot in this period. Down into the final minute of this period. Knocked away at the side of the net. It'll be played. Eric Strand, number nine, has moved in. But it'll come all the way back to center ice. Clearing the zone. Rozo, they do, held up behind the net. A couple of answering goals in this period so far. As Halston guard got the first one, Rizzo got the lead. Shot's going to be deflected off his stick. Hoganson got his stick out there to block that, and the faceoff will stay in the zone. Jake Paling answered for Lakeville North. They've been our goals. Well, look at Hoganson right here. He gets a stick right in the way of that shot, and it gets deflected over the gl glass. We're seeing both sets of defense, Rozo and Lakeville North, really doing a great job defensively. Standing up at the blue line, blocking shots, really tough in front of the net. And that's why we got a 1-1 game here getting to the end of the second period. Strand dumped that one out deep. Nobody could get it. Hoganson came back for Rozo. Lakeville looking for an opportunity here in the final second to get a shot. They can't get it out in front in time, though, and that's the second period. Well, no scoring in the first. Each team got one here in the second. Real good, solid game. It really is well played. Both these teams are playing smart. They're making sure they're not getting caught without man situations. They're moving the puck out quickly. They're playing physical when they can, and the defense is playing very good in front of two goaltenders who have given us great games here. The only thing, Gary, going forward, whoever wins here. That top line from both teams has seen a lot of ice. You wonder how long can they continue this for, can they do that for three days and get that much ice, but really a fine game played by both these teams. Well, we'll see whether they can do it for three periods first, I guess. Lou, and let's get out and uh, see what Tori's got. Tori. I got Trent Ida, head coach here of Lakeville North. Uh, coach, you didn't like the start to this game in the first period. You came out a little bit better in the second. What was your assessment of that 17 minutes of play? I think it was good from both sides. I mean, teams are up and down. They're battling hard. It's what you'd expect from these kids this time of year. What's it going to take here in the third period to get this thing done and move on? Well, I think both coaches will preach consistency. We're going to do the same thing we've been trying to do, get bucks to the net. And it has to be, if it has to be an ugly one, it's got to be an ugly one. All right, appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, Trent Eigner, head coach, Lakeville North. No such thing as an ugly goal that wins a game, is there, Lou? I've never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> well, each team in the third period is going to be looking for that. We'll see whether or not either of these teams can solve the other's defense, which tightened it up in the second half of that second period. Game one for game day as the boys' double A is underway. And at the end of two periods, we're tied at one. What a way to kick off the Class AA quarterfinals. Rozo and Lakeville North tied one to one in a very, very exciting game. Rozo strikes first off the faceoff. Zach Yan fires a shot. The rebound comes out to number three, Alex Halston's guard. One nothing, Rozo. Lakeville North, or Mike, what happened here? Well, just a good hustle by Alex Halston guard. Who the coach from Rozo said before the tournament began, no one knows about this kid, but by the end of the tournament, they will, and he proved his value right there. Just pure hustle on that. Now, less than a minute later, Lakeville North answers when it's one of the prettiest passing plays you're going to see in this entire tournament. Number seven, Nick Paling carries the puck in, passes to number four. Ryan Paling very patiently waits for his brother Jack Paling to arrive in the slot. He buries it, and there's a family reunion, Dave. Well, this was a, a big goal, a big response by Lakefield North right after Rosa had taken the lead here. Great poise by the freshman Ryan Paling. This kid is a special player, as Coach said. He made a great play at a, at a really important time for Lakefield North. 
Today's stats are brought to you by PolyMet, working on a plan to mine the copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. Learn more at gopolymet.com. And they were incredibly patient on that Lakeville goal. They came in, they did not panic. They knew they were down by a goal. And uh, Dave, that was just one of the prettiest plays you'll see. Well, I think Coach Eigner was looking for that type of composure right there at that point of the game, and they got it out of him. Right now, if I'm Coach Eigner in the locker room, though, it's a, it, you know, Rozo's got them right where they want them. Lakeville North has worked hard to get this number two seed. I think it's a little wake up call. Guys, let's go out there and finish this thing off here and pick it up here this third period. What's Rozo talking about right now? Well, I think Rozo's talking about right, right what they've done. They've played their game, they've played well, they've missed more score, good quality scoring opportunities, in my opinion opinion than Lakeville North has. So I think the Roseau coaching staff, they're very pleased. In fact, they may be a little upset that they haven't or that they don't have the lead right now. Tom. There's been solid goaltending on both sides. 38 shots total in this game, only two goals. You know, this has been one of the best games that I've seen these last couple years. Just up and down pace. Both goaltenders making great saves here. Lakeville North, they're coming at you in waves. Three lines at a time here. I think at this point, they're going to probably have a good chance of wearing out Rosa. Rosa's just down to two lines. I look for Lakeville North to really turn up this third period. Well, this is what it comes down to. It's the third period of play in our first quarterfinal game as they continue their hunt for a state championship. Now let's learn more from the specialists at TRIA Orthopedic Center, helping you make your move toward a healthier, active lifestyle. TV. Tori Halt is down ringside, and Tori, I think going into this game, if you told Rozo they'd be one-to-one -one with Lakeville North going into the third period, they'd take that. Very much so. Rozo right now is very happy. That locker room had a lot of chatter, a lot of screaming and yelling, and I think they're ready. We're not playing history here. This is a very good Lakeville North team. This is an underdog Rozo team, and they're playing right now to play defensive hockey in this third period, hope to get the turnover and win this game two-to-one, Gary and Lou. Well, it's going to be an interesting third period. you got to believe uh, Lakeville's going to try and come out here and put a real surge on. And uh, Russo's just going to keep on doing what they're doing and take advantage of a miscue maybe and pick themselves up a goal in the win. They have to be happy with what they're doing, Gary. Yeah. They're, they are playing the kind of game they need to play to stay competitive with Lakeville North, who was one of the co-favorites to win the state tournament this year. And you look at the coach from Lakeville North, he knows his team's capable of scoring more goals. They've got great balance up front. They've got an excellent team. They just have to find the seams and shoot the puck more rather than overpass. At the same time, you just saw a yawn on your screen. And believe me, is he getting a lot of ice time? 18 minutes and 46 seconds. <laughs> He's got out of 34. By the way, Jack Taylor's got 15 34. So those top lines have played a tremendous amount. And you know, you got 17 minutes this period. Expect them to play at least nine this period, each of them. Lakeville North only had three one goal games. They won two and lost one because they averaged five goals a game. So yeah. <laughs> not used to those. Rosso went uh, three and two in one goal games this season. And here we go in the third period. And this one is tied at one. Rosso in the dark green, the home team, Lakeville North in the white. And uh, Lakeville North will get the first chance as it's along the blue line, deflected to the dot, cleared up. Rosso looking to move it out of the zone, tipped away. Most guard has played a lot, number three out there in the ice. 19 goals, 23 assists, just a stalwart for this Rosso team. This Rozo team is a, a team that never quits. They battled. They they started the season off. They had some uh, losses. They probably thought they were going to win, but they just kept getting better and better all year. And today they're playing their best. I have to tell you, the game they're playing today, they couldn't have asked for anything more. They have really been effective. Strand brings it in. His shot save made. Deflected off into the corner. The D got there. Backing up. Walling was able to move it. Here comes Jack Walling again. Drops it. Ryan in the middle, shot, hit the post, rebound, top of the dot, fanned on the attempted chance. Jay Pauling, that one goes off the blocker and up and into the netting, and a great chance for number two. Boy, oh boy, the failings ever get cl close that time again. You know if Lakeville's going to score, it's probably going to be these guys, and you see right there Nick Paling put one right off the pipe. In fact, the first goal that we had in this game, all three brothers, as you're looking at the shot from overhead that hit the pipe, all three brothers were in the goal. I can't remember a game in a state tournament with three brothers who were in on one goal. There you go. There's a trivia question. Since you've only seen 50 years worth of these. 
<laughs> well, you don't usually find three brothers on a team. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that will draw the whistle for the faceoff. It was uh, for Jack Paling. He had 28 goals, 23 assists. Ryan had 11 goals and 22 assists. And Nick had 12 goals and 29 assists. That's what that top line looks like. And that is a whole team's worth of scoring for this Lakeville North first line. That's going to be an offside call. Well, you know, this really benefits Rozo. If you could keep the play sort of stopping and starting, not just through a free flow, I think they're better in that game than Lakeville is. Lakeville likes to go with the puck, move the puck a lot. Rozo's good at just keeping you off balance, and they like these these whistles going like that. They, they just will, you know, look for that one turnover, like you said, Gary, and that's what they're hoping for in this game. Zebra was able to move the puck into the zone, intercepted. Hogan on the far side, cleared it up, but not out. Little pass down low, it's going to go wide. That was a setup pass on the backhand right there, but couldn't connect on it, but a pretty good move by Aslett to try and find a teammate in the middle. Rozo, that one centered, went off the defenseman stick out in front. Inebeck cleared the other way. Lakeville North screaming down the middle, shot, and that's going to go wide. Real good rush. Tristan Haslett, who has had an outstanding season and a, even a better sectional, almost got a go-ahead goal. He'll head off the ice line changes. And he's had a good game here today. He and Ennebeck have really had a good game along with their Cinnamon Johnson. They've been a good factor for Lakeville. Trying to put some heat on now. Lost centering pass. That's going to get blocked. He was in front. Ian Klotz is called the secret weapon for this Lakeville North team. He plays it tough in the middle. That one got blocked to the far side by Nate Broughton as Broughton went down in front to get a piece of it. Hyden on the far side. Nick Hyden had it stolen. Trying to move it out of the zone. Rozo not able to do that. It'll be chased again by Broughton. Broughton gets pinned up. Klotz over there with him. Alex Strand, nine in green, looking on the reach in from behind. Broughton unable to control it. Held in. This is a long defensive stretch for Rozo right now. So when it gets dangerous out in front, it got blocked. Third back into the corner. Centering pass. That rolls by everybody. Matt Arnold was trying to set it up. Finally cleared out of the zone. Haltesgaard. He'll come back the other way with Strand cutting to the net. And a save made. And not found. Still loose. Played at the bottom of the dot and up. Another great shot by Jan on that goaltender. That rebound came right out, and Rozo on their heels for a while. Looked like that they were going get to get a rebound goal there. Boy, at the end of that shift, pretty good legs were left. Here comes Failing again down the middle. Pass got blocked and set up the near side. Halstegard will move it out. This is Strand. Strand down on the ice. He'll take Failing with him. Cleared around the boards. Some hits on the offside. No penalties called, though, away from the puck. Zone has been cleared. Dumped in. Halstegard got it down low. That's Dan Halstegard, the uh, right D. Blocked in the corner. Milner. Milner looking back into the middle. The shot in that one is fanned on by Hunter O'Leary. And now it's Lakeville's turn to try and move it out of the zone. Both teams having some pretty good possessions in the offensive zone. Bailing will move it in again. Has he left the ice yet? Over to Nick Paling. Dropped it to the blue line. Shot screened wide. Sadik. Sadik had a good tough shot right there. Here's the race. Milky coming. He's all alone. Milky will turn the corner or try to hit the side of the net. Boy, both these clubs were able to get their first line out against the other team's second line and both got away with it. Buck dropped to the dot. Paling leaves it back into the middle. Shot there. That one got blocked as well. That was Jack Paling who had the opportunity from his brother. Set in. Helgeson down the middle. Shot save made. Good move on the kick away right there by Jake Ottinger on a turnover. And he was all alone for that shot. Good shot there by Helgeson. And that's what Rozo's doing. Just what you said. Looking for that one shot on a turnover. Get the chance and put it in. Make a mistake. They'll take advantage of it. Ennebeck moved it. Deeper into the corner for Lakeville. Puck sitting over there. Jan. Jan will leave it wide. Halstegard in. Jan headed to the net. So is Strand. Halstegard did trip. And a penalty coming up. First power play opportunity of the game for the team that's got the best power play in this tournament and probably in the state. 
Well, Rizzo gets the opportunity on this. Well, you wanted to see it, Gary, that power play, and you're going to see it now as Halston Guard gets taken down. And so now Rizzo with their first opportunity to pull into the lead here with a power play. Now you're going to look at the Rizzo power play. It is phenomenal. If you look at that and say, wait a minute, that's got to be wrong. No, it isn't. That's what you would think. <laughs> Those are unbelievable numbers. But I will point out that Lakeville has got seven shorter-handed goals this year, so you can't just discount them when they're a man short. Jan has got eight power play goals. There he is working at a point. Five have been picked up by Alex Halstegaard. They are the leaders in power play goals this season for Rozo. You see Lakeville playing very deep D-wise. It'll be blocked. Second shot deflected wide into the corner. That is Bjugson who had the opportunity. Bjugson playing the top on the power play now and that a good poke check to knock it out. Jack Paling, good job defensively. Real good job to get that puck out of the zone. You want to kill as much time as you can and the best way is to get it down there and make him make some passes to come out. Power play Rosso in the dark jerseys with the opportunity. And then they take advantage of it and get the lead back here in this game. Right around the boards over there is Strand. Alex Strand out on top still. Bjergsen to the top of the circle. Shot there and that will be into the glove and that's Jan again. I don't think he misses the net. It's amazing. He, that's why he's got those goals. Look at this glove work. Watch this shot. This is a great snapshot. Got it away right on the corner. And boy, that goaltender, Ottinger, has had to do that about five. Well, Jan had nine shots coming into this period. That's ten. That's a lot of shots. When you look at their team, it's over half of them. Strand won the faceoff. And are still trying to hold it in the zone. Can't. Every one of these clearing of the zones by Lakeville is so important when you've got this booming power play against you here in the third period. And they're looking for the lead off it. Again, Strand trying to drag it. Couldn't. Gets blocked in the middle. Taken in behind the net. Held his guard. What a game he has played. Picked up by McNeely. He can't clear the zone. Now they'll go with the two at the blue line. Back again, Jan. Tried to one-time it. Went off the heel of the stick. And another big clear. Well, that, now we got him with a miss anyway. He tried to get that away real fast. Timing just wasn't there and didn't get all of it and missed the net. 24 seconds left on the power play. Matt Arnold on the forecheck for Lakeville. Great job. He's up there alone, but he's driven the puck back, and that takes those precious seconds off this power play. Right back in far side. Yawn again. Yawn trying to circle. Trying to find a little room. Can't. Shot's going to be deflected. Not much of a shot. There wasn't any room there. Bjergsen had it. Held by Strand again behind the net. Looking for Yawn in the dot. Yawn shot and a save right into the middle. Yawn drags it into the corner. Power play is over. Yawn trying to circle around. Can't get it on net. Back up to the point. Hugginson looking, his shot, that goes by everybody and was not seen. Ottinger did not know where that puck was. Back up onto the point, line changes being made here. Rosso's getting some new people out there. Lakeville's not been able to do it. They've got some tired skaters who are out there for the penalty kill. Now they'll get a clear. And they had Hayden without a stick. He had a broken stick, so they, they were playing with a man with a broken stick. He couldn't play with that, so... Had an advantage for Rozo there. We are back to five on five. Jack Helgeson sends that one wide of the net. We're full strength here. Oh. Tipped on net and a save made. Rebound. That one's going to go wide. Great oh. intercept down low. Helgeson helping to lead the charge on this line. Shot save on the kick out. Bjugson had the opportunity. That centery pass will come to center. Oh, what an opportunity for Milky. He, uh, he got a good shot away by the goaltender Oninger. Another great save. Both of these goaltenders have had great saves here today. Brady Castle out there putting the hit on after the puck gets cleared out to center. Hunter O'Leary knocked it down. Couldn't control it. Swept the other way by Hazlitt. Down the middle. Hazlitt's chance. Stick goes flying wide. Rosso with the player now. Rosso without uh, a stick out there in the middle is Connor Milner. There's Milner, and of course he gets involved in the play, but they're able to clear it out. Why they don't, don't go get the stick is beyond me. I've never seen a guy that uh, made a great play without a stick. If you haven't seen it, nobody has. No, <laughs> you're going to see a goalie stick <laughs> save right there. There the saves made down low is some real good chances for Rozo in this tie game. 
And our game summary brought to you by Trio Orthopedic Center, bringing innovation to patient care for extraordinary results. And look at that. Holson guard got his 20th goal, but one of the amazing things, Jan, 12 shots. The team's got 22. Anderson, 21 saves. The Paling's all with a point on the goal that they have. You know that if Lakeville gets a goal, that's usually a Paling involved. Right now, Rosso. 9-1 in the period in shots over Lakeville. They're the ones who have had the opportunities. And this face-off will be won back. Paling centering pass after he won his own draw. He intercepted and moved out of the zone. How about that? Think about dangling and stick handling. He moved back in. That was John, of course. We got by the uh, entire family of Palings at that time. Yeah, he did. <laughs> to move it up ice. I think you're right. Came through everybody coming out of the zone. Pressure gets even greater here on, on everybody, but especially the goaltenders in a tie game, third period. 7.40 to go here, game one on this four-game day. And uh, right now, these two teams have put on a heck of a show. Well, when you look at <laughs> Lakeville North, look at the palings. You see all, all three of them there involved, and Jan's going by them all. He took that puck from his own zone, came right out, took a couple heavy checks. You wonder how he can play so much and be in involved in as much contact as he's involved in and not be very, very tired. And he's, took an, he's taken a couple of pretty good hits in this game, as you would expect, because they, uh, Lakeville's made sure they know where he is, whether on the bench or on the ice. Jam up around the corner. It'll be moved up. Rozo able to get it out through center. Eggleson had the hard effort to get it that way. Intercepted by Arnold. His backhand pass. Gets knocked away. Drawn there at center ice. Couldn't control it. Supper was there. Hits are picking up. That was Jack Eggleson right there who put that hit on. Back into the middle. Front shot. Oh. Blocked straight up in the air. Another big opportunity. Rolled wide. D was trying to get that back to the goaltender that time, and it went through. That shot just misses wide on the far side. Ian Plotz, the secret weapon, almost got it done. Boy, I don't think the goaltender knew where that puck was after it hit him. It went up in the air. It could have gone right down in the crease. Great effort at that end as these goaltenders had to make some big saves. 26-23, the shots now in the game. Rosso with the lead in that department, but the game tied at one. It'll be held in Lakeville, looking down the middle in the slot. Tried to draw it back. Ooh, Paling tried, couldn't do it. That shot, Paling in the side of the net as he goes down. Backhanded it off, right off the edge of the net, not on goal. Paling just moves there. He should have taken the shot. He made a great move and then did, didn't take the shot. He was six, seven feet in front of the goaltender. And whistled on the offside. Watch this. Watch this. Here's a, a shot from uh, the point. Now, right in front's Paling. He tries to dive and get that puck past the goaltender and doesn't. McNeely put it right on that where he should have. And Paling just making that dive. Jack Paling couldn't get it. Look, he's just outside of his stick reach. He he's bat that out of the air, Lou. That no, looked, it, it might have been on a, on a short like a, hop. Yeah, yeah, on the short hop. It looked like yeah. he got a stick on it there. And he's back to work at the other end. That shot is going to be taken in wide. Logan Monstert out there. That'll be whistled for a faceoff. So, who's going to get the one? Because we're down to a point where only one is needed. So, you got to do this in order to prevent those opportunities. Game tied at one. TRIO was founded with three partners and one principal. The patient is number one. That's driven innovation after innovation. Like our renowned facility built to deliver state-of-the-science orthopedic care all under one roof. Including research. You wonder, you know, if the University of Minnesota's got to be open. What <laughs> happened here? <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll change their mind, but they're not going to. Alston's guard will get chased out of there. Alex Strand will move in. Face off will be won by Ryan Pauling. Intercepted. Looking Strand fanned on it. Into the middle. Top line out there for Legville. Bailing shot. That's going to get blocked up into the netting. Good stick work again as Bugson got the stick out there to block it. Well, both these coaches are using the timeouts to come right back with their top line, even though they've been out there before. And we've seen uh, a lot of, especially Rosa's top line. I think they give them just maybe a minute or two more ice time than the top line of uh, Lakeville. 
Living will win the faceoff. Circles with it. Had it knocked away. Rottensdahl, good job defensively. Into the middle comes Strand. Now he'll trail. John drops it back to him. He'll take the hit in the corner. Paling was over there and put a pretty good shot on. That was Nick Paling who got it. And uh, he'll go cross ice to Jack. Paling looking into the middle. Shot's going to be deflected again off the stick. Now, Gary, that was a great play in the defensive zone by Nick Paling. He went all the way back down in the corner. He's the guy that got it out of the zone. You're going to see good defense here. You where Rosa stays right with her man in front of the net. But Nick Paling went back and helped the defenseman out. He made that long outlook pass. And that's what Lakeville uh, hasn't been doing as much, getting clean shots out of their zone. Good long passes like that. But Paling did it for him there. Mike Johnson had the puck, got the shot, got it back and lost it. Rolled the center. And Rosa needs to clear the zone. And they do after the dump in. Ennebeck came back to get some help. It goes around. Cover on the near side. Cleared back into the middle. Johnson centering. Shot. Save. It was loose for a moment. But held on to. Nice work by Ryan Anderson. Yeah, and Ennebeck's had a real good game as well. Coming off that wing, he's had a number of shots on net. Got a good pass there from Johnson. And you could tell Lakeville North right now, when they're getting the opportunities to shoot, they're shooting the puck more. They're not overpassing as much as they did in the first two periods. Ennebeck uh, off the faceoff win by Johnson. Clears it around the boards. Tied at one. Keep an eye on the clock. 4.36 less to go. We're down to where the next one wins in this game. Third back up to the point. Keeper lost it on the pass. Moved into the middle. Shot partially blocked. Turnaround chance goes to the middle. Good defensive play in front. And again, that was Luke Saber who was there to knock that away and created opportunity at the other end. Loose puck back in behind the net. Nobody out in front. It's going to be tough going here. Both teams trying to keep the body on in order to free the puck up. Aslett had it turned, shot. That's going to go wide. Elke over to get it. Elke will turn to the middle. Strand, he's alone. Team uh, changing up behind him. Both will now. Strand held it in long enough to get the line change done. But both these defense doing a real good job not giving the forwards any opportunity to beat them. They're poke checking the puck away. They're getting the puck out. They're playing physical. Hogan. Each of these clubs, Gary, good, real strong on defense. Today. Real strong. And if they stayed that way, isn't that That's right, all the way through. It's been a game that's taken a lot out of you defensively uh, for both the defensemen and the forwards because everybody's had to be involved in it. We're seeing more of that now as nobody wants to create a lane here and an opportunity for a setup pass. 319 left to go. Stand up check put on Hyden as he came in. Shot, save, rebound, lose, save again. Rebound chance turning was Ian Klotz. Trying to drive it in. Short side. It's covered up. And a massive pileup and no goal. <laughs> and, and he saw Alta Vila back on the defense for <laughs> Lakeville. Had his arms in the air. He thought the puck was in the net, but no goal, he said, because of that big pileup right in front. Let's take a look at our save of the game. And you see it right there, a good shot from the point, a deflection right in front, and that deflection was just saved again. So another outstanding save by Anderson there. And our save brought to you by Catholic United Financial Life Insurance Annuities and Retirement Products. Big face-offs in the offensive end, obviously, now for both these teams. Paling trying to win that one back to Ryan Paling. Ryan Paling gets stood up a little bit. Good work defensively. Martin's Dahl back into the middle. Paling, poke checked away. Got it again. Shot save again. Oh, great shot and an even better save. Wow, and the goaltender Anderson was down, and he had to catch that one almost in the armpit because that was a good shot by Nick Paling right from the slot area here. Turns, wheels, and if there was a rebound, right on the doorstep was Ryan Paling. Good save by Anderson. Mm. Another one of these big draws. Nick Paling. Unable to control. Two on three. Rizzo just dumped that one into the end of the zone. As Hegelson got it down deep. It's long rink wide passes now for Lakeville trying to open it up. Paling with that first line back out there again. Just slipped and fell that time. Hegelson will move it up the other way. Hegelson in. Shot. That one goes wide. Heads to the bench. Rizzo on the line change. Four checking job, move back out through center. 
That was Zach Yon who was doing the forechecking that created the turnover. Into the middle, Paling drops it. Nick Paling heading to the net, shot, that deflected wide. Jack Paling was trying to get set up in front. Back for Ryan Paling. Ryan Paling to the top of the dot, nowhere to go. That's Nick, back to Ryan. Ryan trying to wind up, get a shot off, couldn't do it. Move back in, Altavilla, Altavilla's shot. That's gonna go off the far side boards, look out here. Zach Yon, Yon, can he make the move? Can he get ahead, Puck checked away. I don't bring you to the edge of your seat. Boy, that was a great play by McNeely to stop him. Here comes Strand, two on two. Strand in, 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 and shot! And it went wide. They have got the top of the glove, but it went off the glass. Rebound chance comes back to him. Strand shot save made. Squeezed the pads, and he did, and it rolls out to center. Oh, next goal wins. <laughs> Hang on, sports fans. Wow. Watch this defensive play right here by McNeely. If Yon gets to the outside and look at Strand trailing right there, that was going to be some opportunity, but a great recovery by McNeely. He knocked that puck away, and yet Rosal still got another good shot. Story told us earlier in the game, early on, the decision was made that McNeely was going to shadow Yon when he was out on the ice. That's what he's doing. That's what he is, and it's a good thing he was there at that time because Yon was coming with a lot of speed, and if he gets to the outside, he protects the puck with his body very well. You can't reach over and get it. He keeps the body in between. So, great play by McNeely. Rosso's going to take the timeout with a minute 25 left to go. This, of course, is just game one on this four-game day for the double A's. And we've got the Cougars and the Eagles waiting to go about a half hour after this one concludes. And I expect another good game like that, Gary, because you got Eden Perry's a very solid team, and Centennial's a good team that's very physical. I, I think we're going to see some bodies falling around in that game. We've seen the physical play in this game pick up here in the third period as things get tight and time starts running out. I think the referees have done an outstanding job here. Just... This game has only had three penalties. It only needed three penalties. They've really controlled the game very well. It's been a terrific effort by the referees here. Each of these teams has kept themselves under control. Lakeville wanting to do that with that tremendous power play that Rozo's had all year, and they have had only one chance in this one. Lakeville's gone 0 for 2 on the power play. So with that timeout taken, frontline skaters... Figure they're going to be out on the ice for the rest of this thing. Yeah, I think you're right. A minute 25, they're not going to leave the ice too much. Alex Strand on this faceoff, won it. Turn around, Young, save made. Oh, Another blistering shot right along the ice. And you had to make the save on it. Comes back to the middle. What a move. Strand shot. It got blocked in the pack. Here's a three on two the other way. Bailing moving it up. He'll head to the net. Looking to the center. It went by him and wide. Well, the paling line is back Last out there, turning the and paling. One minute left to go here in regulation. Drop to the point. Shot goes off the backside of the net. Rebound. Save me. Oh. oh, again, it was Jack Paling open on a backhander. What a save right there. That puck came off the boards, went to the one paling brother. He gets it out to Jack. And I have to tell you, that goaltender had to come across quickly because that backhander was labeled. Ryan Anderson with another big save. Both these goaltenders had to make good saves. Yon had a great chance on the far end, an excellent shot. And then the top goal scorer in Lakeville, Jack Paling, stopped by Anderson. Jack Paling on the faceoff. Strand won it, couldn't control it in the middle. Paling again, shot it wide. Anderson had no idea where that was as he was screened. Turning back to the middle, here's Nick Paling. That one deflected, comes back to the top of the dock. Rolled up to the blue line and out. Chased out by Haldisgaard. He'll get it out to center with 30 seconds left to go. They clear the zone. Shot's going to be gloved and held on to it. Another big faceoff. Well, we're looking at the shots on goal. 28 each right now. But I want to say that Rozo has blocked an inordinate amount of the shots. It's just really a tribute to the way those defensemen and even forwards. We've seen some great blocks by people like Alex Strand and <laughs> Halstengard. A lot of shots blocked by the Rosa Rams today. Big face off to the top of the dot. Couldn't get the shot off. Had it on the stick. And then and by couldn't get the shot done. It'll be rolled back into the corner. Back to get it. Sadik. Not out. Milky held it in. Boy, it was a great chance. Ten seconds left to go. 
Cleared out the center. Maybe one more shot. Johnson trying to center it. Ridden off. Hits the back of the net. Puck up against the wall. We're going OT in game oh. one. I have to say, I didn't expect this. No. I didn't expect an overtime. And we really are looking at a game that deserves to be in overtime. Both of these clubs have had good opportunities. They've played solidly, strong defensively, great goaltending by each of these teams, excellent chances. It's just a terrific, terrific uh, effort by both these clubs here. Can't get any more even than this. It is tied at 1-1 going into the OT. The shots are even at 29 apiece. Both of the goals coming on top of one another in that second period. No scoring in the first, no scoring in the third, but somebody's going to score and win this game by a score of 2-1. to one. question now is who? Pleasure to be back here on 45 TV. And an opportunity. Gary Thorne working with Lou Nanny here. My first game. And I want to thank Lou for uh, creating an overtime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and those guys created it right there. And if you're looking at Jan on the left and Palin on the right, Jan, eat your heart out, Suter. Jan has played 28 and a half minutes out of 51. <laughs> Suter plays 28 out of 60. So <laughs> he's probably <laughs> envious. By the way, Rozo's blocked 14 shots. Lakeville, five. Wow. So here we go. Overtime in game one on this four-game day. No question, Lakeville came into this as uh, the favorite. It is intercepted. The shot dribbled in on net and went wide. Boy, uh, that was Yanni. When just, Yon's out on the ice, look out. It just went over. It, the puck went under his stick. He seemed to just get the top part of the puck. Oh, he's going to be talking to himself right now. Here's the guy you don't want coming in like that. Yon's going to get this puck right here. He's going to steal it. Comes right through. And the puck... It probably was uh, affected by McNeely because McNeely recovered and just got part of Jan's stick. And that's why Jan didn't get much on that shot. He's got seven game-winning goals on the year. The leader for this Rozo team, as you would expect. Each netminder now ever focusing on where that puck is. Paling will dump that one in. Around the near side. Big Paling. Paling trying to hold it. Pinned up. Gigs on. Moves it in. Takes the shot. Off the blocker. Goes off the glass. Brian Paling. Left it for him. Paling uh, cutting to the net. Nick Paling. And he moves back out. Paling will drop it back out onto the point. Shot. Chance. Block deep. Rebound out to Villa. The Villa got it back in behind the net. So early on in the overtime here. At least territorially. It's Lake Bill North. They're not trying to move it out. Rosso needs to get it out and get a line change here. Alta Villa sent it up and in. That will draw the whistle so they can get the change here. And that's what they needed. <laughs> Rosso was a little tired in their own zone there. And when you get tired, that's when you make a mistake. You don't recover as well. And fortunately for them, the puck went over the uh, screen and they had a line change. Good pressure down there by the Paling brothers, especially Jack with a great puck control. Two goaltenders who both deserve to be winners in this game. Into the middle. Oh, that's, that's a game-winning goal. Henry Ennebeck found the puck, drilled it along the ice, and an overtime win as Lakeville North to the one. Another face-off win, and that was a difference. Ennebeck had a couple chances earlier in the game off that. He gets a puck here right after the faceoff, and boy, did he get that shot away quickly and puts Lakeville North into the semifinals after an outstanding game. 30 shots by each team, 2-1 to score, an overtime game, and a fabulous effort by Henry Ennebeck there on the winning goal. Always big, but when a freshman is able to come away with it as he is that's really special today's player of the game brought to you by ccm start your legend with ccm hockey hey, while well, you're looking at henry Ennebeck, and he certainly is the player of the game with that winning goal he got that away so quickly low and there's nothing the goaltender could do about that great chance and uh, no chance to stop that as it slid along the ice well, our play of the game brought to you by CCM. Start your legend with CCM hockey. The one that wins it. And you see 
Ennebeck right there fighting off a check and still getting that shot away to beat the goaltender. Great effort by Ennebeck. He's getting checked and gets that shot away. And that's all it took for Lakeville North to advance to the semifinals tomorrow night. What a great game we saw here today, Gary. Mm. Just a wonderful effort by both teams. Rose will play their hearts out. Lakeville North, the same thing. Each of these clubs had great goaltending, great defensive play, great body checking, great puck control. A wonderful way to start the State High School Championship. Couldn't have a better game. Inneback gets his 11th of the year. Johnson and Hazlitt will pick up the assist. 121 of the overtime, and it's the one more shot that Lakeville had over Rozo as they outshot them 31 to 30, and the last one is the one that got it done. But for Rozo, what a tremendous effort in a game in which they came in as the underdogs and just played Lakeville North, one of the team's favorite and uh, seeded number two here in the tournament in a big disappointment. Let's get out to Tori. All right, Henry Annabeck, the game-winning goal here. Take me through the play here in overtime. Well, you know, uh, we had Max on the draw. He, he won it pretty clean. Got it back. Trudy kind of whiffed on the shot, and I saw it out in front, just turned around and shot it quick. Hope for the best. Safe to say that's probably the biggest goal of your life. How would you kind of characterize this moment right now? Oh, it's unreal. I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. I just can't even believe it. Well, here's the puck for you that you just scored game one and goal uh, to send your team into the uh, semifinals. What are you going to do with it? Probably put it up in my room. I don't know. <laughs> Congratulations, and uh, what a game, what a battle. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, freshman Henry Annabeck. Ten goals on the season, Gary, but none bigger than that one, probably in his life. <laughs> I have a feeling about 60 years from now, he'll still know where that puck is. I think you're right, and he'll still remember scoring that goal. <laughs> yes! you know, this is quite a thrill just to get to the state championship, and then you get a winning goal in overtime. How do you top it? Well, you may get a chance because they're going to play some more. A great opener as the AA teams open up with four games here. And uh, for game one, Lakeville North, the favorite, comes away with a win. But uh, as Lennon said, you know, it don't come easy. The final, two to one. Few minutes, we will be back in game number two on this four game day coming up. Barely getting by the Roseau Rams by a score of two to one in overtime. Yes, an overtime thriller. I know we love those in the state tournament because there is no more drama you're going to find anywhere in life than a high school hockey state tournament overtime game. Oh, what a great game. What a way to kick off the double A's bracket. We're going to have a great game, a great day today. Hats off to Rozo and a losing cause. They put on a display. Those kids played very, very well and gave Lakeville everything they could handle. Lakeville was heavily favored. But Rozo acquitted themselves very well today. Yeah, and Lakeville coming in with that top line of theirs with the Paling brothers, uh, they were kept in check other than they did get the first goal, but then the second goal uh, came from the second line. Yeah, you know, when Mike and I were talking about the balance throughout this Lakeville North uh, team, uh, that Paling line was dynamite all game long, but it was a second line player here who made a great play. A little kind of a missed play off the face off there, buried it, it was a great finish. So d does this close game, does this help Lakeville North now moving forward? They they've kind of gotten over the jitters? I think so. I think that they, they're they they're settled in now. They know they won. This is the toughest game for anybody to win in the state tournament. It's the first one. You can lose it on the first day, but you can't win it. And that was the way Lakeville played today. Maybe more afraid of losing than they were playing to win to begin with. So they're settled in now. Let's take a look at the game winner. And Dave, this is why it's so important to win the faceoff on a crucial time like this. Well, you know, as a coach, faceoffs are critical to a game. They're not times to just stand around and rest here. Everybody's got a responsibility here. All this, you know, Henry Annabeck just needed a little bit of room here to get that shot off. And you can see right there, the guy had great defensive position, but he just was able to get that shot off and beat the goaltender who played great for Rozo. And I, I do think it is a sense of relief for Lakeville North to get to that next level now. Semi-final Friday night. I, I think it's going to be a great night for them. And again, that nice pass off the faceoff was from Max yeah. Johnson. You know, on that play, rule one is don't let the man get position on you. And rule 1A is if he does, make sure you have to control of the stick and and it was. I mean it was a good play. And the back showed his strength for a freshman. He being able to get his stick down on the puck there. I mean that's a lot of strength to be able to get your stick down there and
and shoot the puck. Yes. And Dave, I liked what Ennepec said. He, he just threw the puck at the net and hoped for the best. He was very honest about it. And I'm sure each coach, as they were standing over their team there in the last few minutes, you know, before they went to overtime, every shot's a good shot, and there it was, the one shot that's all that was needed. Today's stats are brought to you by Polymet, working on a plan to mine the copper, nickel, and other essential metals that make this broadcast possible. Learn more at gopolymet.com. And shots on goal, remarkable. 30 to 30 until the tipping point, Mike. 31st shot for Lakeville turns out to be the game winner in it overtime. Was. And it was. Good play, good play for uh, Lakeville. I think you look back at the first period and you look at the scoring opportunities that uh, Jan and Strand had for Rose, or Rozo when they missed those lone breaks. They would like to have those back right now. Yeah, Zach Jan did show why he yeah. is a, a he class could. player in the state. He had a lot of opportunities today. Every time he touched the puck, he was a threat. And you could see that, you know, uh, Lakeville North did all they could to handle him. Oh. Every single shift, he was creating chances. What a great player. What a, uh, you know, outstanding future for that young man. You and, bet. And the best news for us is we're just getting started. This <laughs> was an exciting way to start the day in Class AA as... Uh, we saw an overtime thriller, Lakeville North moving on. We've got Centennial and Eden Prairie still to come. Our coverage on 45 TV will continue after this.